could carry out such a... This White House here, you can see the yellow tape blocking off. And they... Hello, everyone. So today we are going to do a deep dive investigation on the Isabella Guzman case. Now, this case happened in like 2013, but it has been since revived on TikTok. There have been people recreating uh, her facial expressions and recreating the court cases, calling her like cute but psycho and sweet but psycho and saying she's beautiful and saying whoever she killed, they deserved it because she's pretty and saying they can't believe she killed someone because she's so pretty which is crazy to me but you know so we are going to go ahead and talk about this case today and so i just wanted to remind you to please hit that subscription button if you are interested in true crime stories i make two to three videos a week talking about uh, different serial killers and other um, cold cases and so let's go ahead and grab a hot drink or a snack if you want and let's take a deep dive into the isabella guzman case Isabella Guzman was born in June of 1995. Her parents are Yoon Mi and Robert Guzman. And the family lived in Aurora, Colorado, and they were devout Jehovah's Witnesses. Her parents divorced when she was pretty young. Unfortunately, there are a lot of um, dates and times that are missing from online information that you could find out about this case and I couldn't find any like books or anything written about this case so some things like I don't know the exact like year or date but we know that her parents divorced when she was pretty young and it was decided that she would live with her mother although her and her mother never got along like she you know they just did not get along they fought all the time even when she was very young and when she was about seven years old her father uh, decided to take her in uh, robert and uh, she lived with him for a few years and then basically was tossed back with uh, her mother you and me and it just seems as if they put her back and forth and took turns taking care of her instead of just finding the core issue of her problem and in no way to like victim blame or anything like that because it's absolutely terrible what happened but i do feel like if you are seeing a child exhibit you know terrible behavior and not just like a temper tantrum because they're tired you know we see stuff like that but if you're seeing repeated terrible behavior all the time that's a sign of an issue so definitely you know if you see that type of behavior from a child or you know witness it it's definitely important to you know get some sort of help because it's better to get help to not only help the child's life and have you know they can have a better quality of life but also help you because a lot of these um, d mental disorders like really severe ones can manifest into something much more extreme later on in life. Isabella was pretty much an average student in school. She didn't get really good or bad grades, just like okay. She kind of just like floated along in school. She didn't participate in extra activities, sports or anything like that. She just really didn't like school. And around this time in life, like middle school, high school age, she actually decided that she didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness anymore. And her and her family like fought about that because they were very devout. This was a really big deal in her family. And so they, you know, were upset about that. And um, you know, again, this just reflected in Isabella's behavior at school because she, you know, she didn't want to be at school. She didn't want to be Jehovah's Witness. And I feel like in a way, Isabella didn't do well in school and nobody could really like make her do well in school or persuade her that school was important. I feel as if when Isabella didn't want to do something, she just didn't do it. And that was it like she just had in her mind she wasn't gonna do it and basically like it was just like okay like it was just like okay just leave her alone and let her do her thing because they really couldn't make her do well in school like most parents are really upset if their child is like not doing well or not going to school because she actually at um the time she was like 18 when she just was about to finish high school she actually dropped out and so Basically, her family just kind of let her do as she pleased because they didn't want to fight with her because they already fought with her so much at home. They didn't want to tack on more 
fights and more issues with her. Although you and me and Robert divorced, they owned a photography studio together and they, you know, kept this business going because they couldn't really afford to let it go. So they continued to work together and often Isabella came to the shop with them and she would just kind of help out a little bit, but she hated being there. Her father later said that she would throw temper tantrums there. She absolutely hated helping. She made it very obvious all the time that she did not want to be there. She wanted to just like be at home and she sat in her room all the time when she was home. She didn't really want to be around her family at all. Anything that made it to where she had to be with her family, she didn't want to be there. So it was very well known to her parents that she absolutely hated being at the photography studio and she hated her mother even more because of this that she kept this job and maintained this like photography studio after um, the parents divorced because it wasn't bringing in a lot of money and you know the mother was a little bit poor she wasn't you know very well off she struggled financially and Isabella hated being poor which is understandable and I feel like for most young kids they are going to be resentful of their parents you know if they see that you know these other children at school have like new clothes and toys and things like that but I feel like once she got older she should have somewhat grown out of that uh, because you start to realize as you get older certain responsibilities and that parents can't always make the choice you know you can't make the choice of being poor and I feel like most people would not choose to be poor but Isabella never grew out of that and she resented her mother so much for being poor and she resented the fact that they couldn't afford a lot. Isabella always um, you know made her mother feel bad again for being poor and not being able to afford a lot especially when she got older like in high school being able to afford clothes and a car and things like that um, you know her mother really struggled with but her mother did the very best she could she tried to provide Isabella with the best life she could often going without herself so Isabella could have a better life but it was never good enough you know Isabella always argued and fought about it and you know like I said before all of Isabella's tan temper tantrums and bad behaviors as in a child only escalated as she got older and the temper tantrums eventually turned into threats and fighting with her mother and so it just escalated over time and there was a point where it was getting to be so much for her mother that their relationship was absolutely terrible. Isabella even snuck boys into her bedroom and her mother would see them like climbing out of the window and running through her like little garden that she had and her mother would be very upset about this and this is something that they fought about often as well because she felt like it was disrespectful to be you know a young teenager and sneaking boys into the home to you know most likely have sex with or do something like that or even just sneaking someone in in general her mother felt like it was very disrespectful for Isabella to do that in her home. The relationship between mother and daughter became particularly violent and really hard when you and me married a man named Ryan Hoy and this became Isabella's stepfather. Isabella would often get in fights with Ryan and her mother and it would often turn to some sort of violence. Um, Isabella would try to hit. She often even like spit at them and she just became so over the top and intense with the fights and she again was sending threatening messages, emails, uh, telling her mom that she was threatening her very often and things just got very much out of hand and she hated Ryan, hated him and she hated her mother too so this was just a constant thing going on these fights. It was just so terrible and it made her mother's life really terrible um, especially towards you know unfortunately the end of her life. Um, you know her life was very hard. Isabella even claimed later on in time that her mother was abusive to her. She said that she was abusive to her all throughout her childhood, but the abuse became much worse when she decided to stop uh, being a practicing Jehovah's Witness. Now, you know, I don't like to say that she's lying because, of course, abuse is an absolutely terrible thing to go through, but there are no sources that claim that Isabella's mother was abusive to her, at least no credible sources. Um, 
of course, in like these TikTok videos that people make, people are blaming her mother, some of them, but there are no credible sources that say that no friends or family said that she was abusive. Everybody said Isabella was given the best life she could possibly have while still, you know, being in a financially like struggling family. Um, so there are no sources that say so. Of course, like I don't want to make a direct statement saying that's not true, but there is nothing saying that Isabella was abused. And Isabella's mother felt that one day she may truly hurt her. So she was always on alert. They started making more police calls um, in regards to Isabella's behavior if she was, you know, really acting out. Um, and, you know, she was always really afraid. She was worried that Isabella may actually hurt her one day. On August 28, 2013, Ryan made a phone call to the police in regards to Isabella's behavior and you know they came and things were calming down her and her mother had gotten into a really bad argument and Isabella actually had a talk with her father Robert uh, her mother called Robert and asked him to come over and you know talk to Isabella and they actually sat outside in her mother's garden for a really long time apparently like a couple hours and Robert thought that Isabella had a breakthrough that day you know he thought that he had you know spoken to his daughter and made a breakthrough and told her like hey you're 18 we have to stop this behavior you know you have to start taking responsibility for your actions and stop blaming your mother for everything and you know Isabella was much calmer and you know she was like talking about like the animals that were outside like little birds and things like that with the with her dad um she was even like commenting on like you know the greenery and how the garden looked like she seemed like she was in a much better state at the end of this talk so you know she went back inside after her father left and you know the mother thought everything was okay and Isabella actually went into her bedroom which was very common anyway um, she spent most of the time in her bedroom when she wasn't at school and at this point she had dropped out anyway so she was in her bedroom like all the time and she you know basically was upstairs all night and while you know Robert thought he made a breakthrough with his daughter Isabella was actually faking the entire thing she was figuring out in her mind what her next move was and exactly what she was going to do. And she put this plan into place around 9 p.m. Um, of course, like I said, Isabella was in her room all night and her mother, you and me, told Ryan they were downstairs like watching TV, just relaxing after like a really stressful day. And you and me said, I'm going to take a shower and then we can, you know, go to bed. So Ryan said, okay, I'm just going to stay and finish my show, uh, go take a shower, and then when you're done, we'll go to bed. And uh, Isabella's mother went upstairs, and after a couple minutes, you know, he heard the water start running, and Ryan heard a really loud thud. And he started hearing a lot of commotion, and so he went upstairs to see what was going on, and right as he made it to like the bathroom door, Isabella shut the door and Isabella and Ryan struggled for a moment, but she eventually like overpowered him and was able to shut and lock the door. Ryan was, you know, knocking on the door, trying to get her to open and he heard all kinds of loud thuds and um, a lot of muffled screaming. So it's believed that Isabella was covering like his, her mother's uh, mouth, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of just really commotion like it was just really terrifying for Ryan it was really scary and so he ran downstairs grabbed his phone and called the police and while he was on uh, the phone with police he ran back upstairs and he you know started hearing the commotion dying down and he actually saw a pool of blood coming out from like underneath the door and eventually the commotion was you know calmed down almost all the way and he heard his wife gasping for air and saying very lightly Jehovah which of course in that religion is the word for God and so this is actually so terrifying like I can't even imagine what that feels like you know like 
hearing my partner struggling and hearing them die through a door and there's nothing I can do about it. So that's actually so terrifying. And so Ryan is still on the phone with uh, the police and the door flies open and there is blood everywhere, like all over the bathroom, all over Isabel. You know, her mother is laying on the floor covered in blood and Ryan then is worried because he feels okay like is she gonna get me next and so he's just like frozen like he doesn't know what to do and Isabella standing there still holding the knife and she just like walks right out and walks right past him and you know she didn't have an angry look on her face she didn't seemed stressed anything ryan said that she looked like she did any other day like she just opened the door after she just like maybe went to the washroom and walked right out like nothing happened it was so scary to him and he just did not know what to do he was worried that she was going to come after him next and he was just very worried by the time police arrived isabella had already fled the home and Ryan had ran into the bathroom to give Yoon Mi CPR, but he realized that it wasn't going to do anything. Her face was barely recognizable. Isabella had slashed her face and like neck area so many times, like she was completely gone. There was no way that she was gonna be able to come back. And Ryan immediately, when the police got there, gave pictures of Isabella because she still had the knife she was covered in blood and she was just like out in the world walking around so they you know the police immediately gave her picture to news stations they were sending out alerts to watch out for uh, Isabella and so you know there was like a lot of worry a lot of people were very worried because they were seeing her on the news and knowing that she could be out anywhere in this area walking around Aurora with a bloody knife so the crime scene was actually cleaned up um, you know, photographs taken, everything was, you know, being taken care of at the home and Isabella was still gone. And so police were looking for her everywhere. And she was actually not found until the next morning when somebody, a uh, um, Aurora citizen, saw her body in a car. They saw a bloody body in a car. And so they actually called the police and, you know, when they came and arrived, they realized it was Isabella, but she was not dead. She was alive. She was just sleeping. And they actually took her to the hospital first because, of course, like she was covered in blood. She had cuts all over her like hands and arms. And so she was cleaned up. She had to receive stitches on her hands. Um, most likely when she was, you know, stabbing her mother, it was very wet and slippery because of all the blood. And so they thought that her hand, you know, had slipped on the blade several times. Um, you know, and of course, like if you are in like a frenzied attack, you are going to be, um, you know, not being careful of yourself. So she received stitches, was cleaned up, and then she was taken to the police department after. When Isabella arrived to the police station. They actually decided to give her a psychiatric evaluation before doing any questioning because the Aurora police had not seen a crime like this in a very long time. It was very intense and they thought that she needed an evaluation first and they actually discovered that Isabella was schizophrenic and she then told the police that she had been hearing voices and people had come to her in vision so she was having audio and visual um, visions in her mind and seeing that people were coming to her and telling her that her mother was not in fact her mother it was a woman named Cecilia and that she needed to be killed in order to save the world. So this is why Isabella hated her mother. She hated her because she thought Cecilia was a bad person and she just was not able to see that Yoon Mi was actually her mother. So, you know, she had all of these visions for years and so she hated her mother that whole time and eventually took it upon herself to, you know, kill Yoon Mi or she thought Cecilia. So because of Isabella's delusions, these you know audio and visual visions she was having, um, telling her to kill her mother, her defense team actually decided to have her plead insanity so she would get you know a lesser sentence, right? And so 
she pled insanity. The courts felt that she was fabricating all of this abuse her mother had put on her. And so they actually gave her an unlimited term in a Colorado psychiatric facility instead of prison time. And basically what this means is Isabella will continue to be in this clinic until she is better. And that is a determination by the doctors there and the professionals there of when she is able to return back to uh, society. And Isabella has tried to plead her case several times. She's tried to, you know, tell them like, I'm on medication now and I'm fine. She has tried to get out several times, but they have still denied her even as late as I believe 2019 or 2020, she tried to get out and they again told her no. And because of the severity of the crime and the vicious nature of the crime, I don't believe that she's going to be let out for a very long time. And many people seem to think the same thing. I really don't think that she's going to be let out for a very long time. So this crime is so sad and I really feel bad for Robert and of course Ryan because you know, they both lost two people that they really cared about. Even though Robert had divorced you and me, you could tell just by like seeing him, you know, like talk about it on the news and, um, you know, just describing what happened. You could tell he felt really bad. So I just feel really bad for both of them. Um, and Ryan, of course, I'm sure was not the biggest fan of Isabella because, you know, they fought all the time, but he lost like the love of his life. He lost you and me. And that was absolutely terrible. And to see this case revived now, you know, about seven, eight years later and seeing that people are telling her and or not telling her, but like putting on TikTok that whoever she killed probably deserved it because she's pretty and calling her the, you know, like sweet but psycho or cute but psycho killer uh, is absolutely terrible. And I feel like the people that have done that really need to reevaluate what they think about life because to me, she killed her mother. That's awful. Like I can understand having a strained relationship with your mother or not wanting to talk to your mother, but killing her when she didn't do anything is absolutely awful. And so when I heard about this case, um, you know, I just thought it was terrible. And, you know, I never heard about it previously. This wasn't, I don't believe this was something that made like nationwide, like big news, but you know, this is something that is still terrible and the fact that people are sensationalizing on TikTok and acting like it's a cool thing because she was cute is terrible and I just think that that's so sad and I just feel absolutely terrible for you and me to lose your life in such a vicious and violent way. I can't even imagine how she feels and I just feel absolutely so terrible for her. So thank you for checking out this video. I really, really appreciate it. Again, if you liked it, hit that thumbs up down below. And if you have any ideas for any cases that you would like me to cover in the future, please leave me a comment down below. I love talking to you all in the um, comments. So thank you so much, and I hope you all stay safe out there and have a great day. Bye-bye.